everyone, and welcome to Community Cooking. I'm Maria Prekacis, and I am excited to have back in the studio one of my favorites, don't tell the others, Jeff LaVia. <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? Nice to see you, Maria. Nice to see you from, I might add, Mr. J's Kitchen. I like the name. Thank you. Thank I like you. the name. So, whenever you come in, it's color, it's fun, and of course, there's flavor. What are we making today? We're going to cook my new obsession, which is quinoa. Okay, that's my new obsession. It's my new pasta. It, well, I wish I could say that, but... <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but... So we're going to cook up some quinoa uh, three different ways today. We're going to do a stuffed zucchini with it with some ground beef. We're going to do yeah. a roasted vegetable and uh, quinoa stuffed bell pepper with some fresh mozzarella on top. And we're going to do a quinoa salad. Oh, yeah. So something for everyone, any type of season, quinoa. And I grew up a lot on stuffed peppers and zucchini. So you have my mom's recipes to compare. But <laughs> I'm sure they'll be great. No pressure. And, it, and what I like about it is because it's gluten-free. You yeah. know, it's kind of, it's, it's nice to just have, you get that pasta sensation like you were talking about, but it's not really. It's not really, but it's actually good for you and good flavor. So what do you want to start with? Uh, what we're going to start with is get our tomato sauce going for our okay. stuffed zucchini. Okay. Um, a really simple one. We have a, a jar of crushed tomatoes here that we are just going to add to our little sauce pot over here. Our sauce pot? I like it, sauce pot. I didn't sauce know there pot. was such a thing as a sauce pot. And this is just a really simple tomato sauce. And if you want to use your favorite jar marinara or, you know, whatever you like, this is just how I like to do we it. We can do that. Tomato sauce, marinara, basically the same thing. Pretty much. Pretty much. And we're going to add some red wine to this just for some extra flavor and why not. Okay. Anything else we're adding to it? We're going to add some oregano and some salt and pepper. I see oregano. You're going Greek on me. Hey, you know, it's a little like... bit of a Greek, uh, and I like to kind of crumble it up a little bit there. And just some salt and a little bit of pepper. Okay. Look at that. Yum. And this is our tomato sauce. So That's it just, it just like cooks easy down. in this kitchen. Here. Yeah. And I'll just cook down here. So, and that was red wine vinegar. Re no, red Dude, wine. Just red wine. I'm like, I'm smelling it going, oh, no, it is just red wine. Well, it's nice to cook with something it. you can also drink. You know, I mean, God if you want to have a little glass of wine with your dinner, it kind of kills two birds with one okay, stone. Okay, perfect. And then how long do we leave this on for? That just cooks for maybe about 10 minutes. Okay. We can actually right. put it back here if All you right, like. We'll, we'll put it on the Sima stove. And then we can get our ground beef uh, filling going. We use the, this is a little big for me, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but I like it. Look at all right, so we have big pan. We're going to add some extra virgin olive oil to it, just a little bit. I'm ready with the spoon. <laughs> I'll behave. Please do. You don't want the spoon. And then we can just add some ground beef to that. Okay. Now, a lot of people add olive oil before you add a ground beef or any sort of meat. Just Not just for sticking. Is it for flavor, too? Um, I do it primarily just for the sticking. Oh, okay. Um, you you so also, it is just for the sticking. <laughs> <laughs> and you also let, you know, it, it, let it warm up a little bit so you're not okay. putting you know, a cold meat in a cold oil because then it'll just absorb the oil. Oh, So oh, that's why that's you want to heat it up a little bit. So we'll just kind of put this in here and we get that nice sizzle. That's exactly what you're looking for. Can I break it up? You can break oh, it no, up. I need something to do with my hands. There you go. <laughs> As you're doing that, maybe you can hand me an onion. I'll chop our onion and get that ready. I don't have goggles, so you get the <laughs> onion chopping. So the funny thing is, I'm a skier. So when I lived in a ski town, it was all about all the chefs and all the sous chefs and preps cooks would use, wear their ski goggles so they wouldn't cry. And now they sell them. They sell little onion goggles. Really? But are there any tricks so you don't cry to uh, onions? You know, I, I, I've tried them all and I always still end up crying. So for me, it's... it's okay, I'm here for you. <laughs> it's just a, I, I consider it a, jo a joyful cry though. Yeah. So we're just going to chop up a little onion here. About half an onion, maybe half a cup. Okay, and you keep the one side on. I so do. So it, it doesn't fall apart. Keeps it intact. You okay. know, cut it in half and then I cut it this way and then a few strips down. And then when you do this, this is actually the way to cut an onion without crying is to cut it as quick as possible. <laughs> the, the tip of the day, yeah. cut it quickly. And that way you won't cry. So we're just gonna add our onion here. I just keep stirring the hamburger. To this. Oh. And this comes together very quickly. We like quick and easy. Yeah. And onions are you know nice and good for you. They have good flavor. They're also a nice, um, it's nice to cook with things like onion because they have properties to them, like it's an anti-inflammatory. So Ooh, it's just, that. it's a little way to kind of give your body a little extra boost. And white onion, red onion, I never know. I know that there's a difference between the sweet, sweet onions, but then all the others kind of fall together with me. Oh, we just put about a clove of garlic in, by the way. The red onion I like to use for raw things, or if I'm going to roast them, 
or a salad, like I said, the raw. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Uh, or, and I like the sweetness of it to roast. I mean, they are the sweeter onion. Um, so I do like to use that a lot. I was at the farmer's market the other day, just on the onion page going, what do I do, what onions? So garlic? Garlic, a little onion. We're gonna add some salt and pepper. Do you use regular salt or kosher salt? I use kosher salt. Okay. Um, I don't like regular salt, you know, a table salt, just because they add chemicals to it to keep it free yep. flowing. Um, and I think that kosher has the cleanest taste. And I know I've said before that I've messed up with the uh, <laughs> sea salt because it doesn't uh, dissolve right away, you know, so you think Doesn't it keep adding salted. salty, yes. salty to your, yeah, I've and done it that too. it keeps on going. So as this kind of okay. browns up here, you can see it kind of start to brown. Now, I actually like to leave a little bit of the beef fat in there when I add the quinoa. Why wouldn't we? Exactly. I mean, it's just <laughs> extra flavor, That right? adds flavor. So we're going to add about a cup and a half of cooked quinoa. And yours is kind of the dual color here. I like it. It is. I like the rainbow quinoa. And the way I cook my quinoa is a little bit different than the package directions. And that's why I never really liked quinoa before. It, it always got clumpy and kind of mushy. Yeah. Because they have you cook it like rice, you know, where you leave it in the pot until it absorbs all the water. I started cooking it like pasta. So you put it in oh. way more water than it calls for. I probably put it in about three quarts of water, you know, a pound bag of quinoa. Yeah. I'll cook the whole thing at one time and I can leave it in my fridge like this for the week. And then it's ready to go if I want to make a salad or if I want to ho come home quickly and do a, a dinner like this. I already have the quinoa ready to go. The difference, though, is you can't throw the quinoa against the wall to see if it's done like pasta. <laughs> no, you can't. We can. And you can't, we can and you can't like, hang a noodle over your mouth and try to bite it either. <laughs> I love it. But that's great, Sue. And then it's more, it is, and it's it light and nice fluffy. And fluffy. That it doesn't, doesn't look get... like my quinoa, so I'm taking that tip. So we're going to add about a cup and a half to the quinoa to the beef mixture, I mean, sorry about that. And let it soak up all that nice beef fat. Oh yeah, that's why you have to have it in there. Look at that, it's soaking it up so nicely. Okay, Ooh, it smells in yummy. There. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna get our zucchini ready. Okay. If you can hand me a zucchini, we got our tomato sauce going over here. Thank you, much. Shall I go, I'm gonna go stir the tomato sauce. So we're oh, gonna cut the there. zucchini here. Here it's right, here's one. All right, perfect. I'm gonna get a little stir. To, cut, to prep the zucchini, we're going to cut the ends off and then cut it in half lengthwise. And then we are going to take our spoon here. That I just used. Oh, we'll use this one here. No, you nice can add spoon. garlic to anything. I'm just going to kind of scoop out the inside of the zucchini and make a nice little boat. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. And you said that you had a, these when these were a big staple for you? Oh, uh, I did. Growing up Greek, a lot of ground beef, a lot of zucchini. We even stuffed tomatoes. Not my favorite, but they were pretty good. How, what would you stuff the tomatoes with? Same type of mixture. My mom, just anything in the garden, she'd stuff it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is, that's Greek and Italian and Mediterranean. Yeah, that's, just, that's the way of life. When you use your veggies, you, you incorporate everything in. That's why they're so healthy, though. Yeah. Mediterranean I mean, diet is a good one. So we're just... You know, kind of scooping this out. It's okay if it's not perfect. But I, that's easy, though, with the spoon. So you just take the seeds out. Yeah. It's de-seeding it. And leave a nice little bit in there. Okay. So we have our zucchini prepped. We have our tomato sauce cooking. We're going to add a little bit of tomato sauce to this. Oh, okay. Um, just about a cup to kind of bind it. Bind away, my dear. Bind away. So see, it already just came together. Nice little quick yeah. little zesty tomato sauce. I love the red wine. It just makes everything smell so good. It does. And just use your favorite red wine. You know, I, I don't want to... <laughs> Whatever you're drinking when you're cooking. <laughs> exactly. Because you know you're going to... The flavors of the red wine are going to concentrate. So, might as well be a red wine you like to drink. That's what I've heard. Cook with the wine you like to drink. Let's add a little more there. There we go. Oh, it smells so good and looks so good. So, our mixture there is ready to go. And we're not just ready here. I'm not just going <laughs> to start eating this. <laughs> And we're going to season the inside of our zucchini. I like to season every layer. Oh, I didn't know that. Just a little bit in here, okay. and a little bit of pepper. And then we have our little um, baking dish over there. <laughs> I knew which one it was. <laughs> I know you're so impressed. Baking dish. Baking dish. That would and we're going to add, add the remainder of our tomato sauce. Okay. I love that you just get, you can get store-bought, and then you just kick it up a little bit. There we go. Okay, that's a lot, but I like it. Well, we're going to float our zucchini in there. <laughs> it is a zucchini boat. We're floating it, it on the is. river. I didn't realize sauce. that until right now. <laughs> and we'll take a okay. little bit of our zucchini mixture here. Which, since it's done, I'm going to taste it. Be careful you don't burn your hands here. 
That's why you're doing it. I'm just eating. <laughs> I have no finger. You know, I know you're a chef. Do you really? Oh, that is so yummy, just plain. It really is, and you can save that to throw in a taco or something. Oh yeah. Oh, that'd be great in a taco. Or even I haven't tried it, but I suppose you could even make a hamburger patty out of it. Probably. I'm not taking it right now. It's a little hot, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> put a little but bit yum. More in here. Being Greek, our hamburger patties are. We put onions and garlic. We actually put almost all of this, but the quinoa would be a nice texture and flavor added. And it adds so much protein, and it's oh, it's just so good for you. It has fiber. Might be a little too healthy for me, yeah. but we'll still eat it. <laughs> well, we have the sauce with the red wine. Of course, we're going to add some cheese. Oh, good. So, Make me feel know. better. So we have it nice and stuffed here, just a couple little. You know, this the recipe you could easily make, you know, three or four zucchini. Yeah. But it's just the two of us. It's just the two of us. Just for dinner tonight. We're sprinkle this with some cheese. Oh, yum. Mozzarella. Mozzarella. You can use whatever cheese you like, but I mean, I, I like mozzarella. You could use and Parmesan. Mozzarella seems to cook well and bind everything together when it goes in the oven. And then you just bake this in the oven. Oh, I'm going to put it in the oven. Well, you tell me what's going on next. Uh, next, we are going to do our roasted vegetable stuffed bell pepper with quinoa. Sounds good again. Go ahead and move this out of the way here. Okay, we got bell pepper. We got bell pepper. So what Do we're gonna we start with it. We we start good. right here. We're gonna cut it in half. If you want, you know, take this part off. Take the little topper off. And then we're gonna cut it like this, and just kind of scoop out these seeds in this center membrane here. I just usually use my fingers. Oh, it's the easiest. Clean hands are the cook's best tool. <laughs> and even if they're not, your guests will never know. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> How do you like that? And if it's for you, hey, you know, you know it's your own smile. hands. Yeah, exactly. So Top get the seeds, seeds out. out. And then I like to sprinkle this again with a little bit of salt and pepper on the inside. I love that. I've never heard of that, but that makes sense. You know, it's seasoned every layer. Season and then what we're going to do now, yeah, let's put a little bit of pepper in here. I always forget which shoulder you're supposed to throw the salt over. I do left. <laughs> or right. With my luck, it would be the wrong shoulder. Yeah, and I end up with that's why you do both. Um, so we're just going to roast some vegetables really quick. And what's okay. really nice about this, again, is you can use whatever vegetables you like, whatever vegetables look good at the farmer's market. Okay. We you can love make this, the farmer's market. Yeah. And you can make this year-round. Again, whatever vegetables are in season, whatever vegetables you like. And I love roasting them because it's a quick way to cook them, and it caramelizes them, so it brings out their natural sweetness. Oh, yum. So we're just going to do a quick red onion here. See, once again, you're doing the cutting of the onion. <laughs> We got the carrots. We got some cauliflower, cauliflower there. Cauliflower, look at these. That's definitely from the farmer's market. Those are some big cauliflowers. And then we could even do a little, um, some more zucchini. Oh, I forgot, we have a spare zucchini. Just a quick little chop here. We're gonna throw them in a bowl. And you chop them real rough. Yeah. yeah Which is good, because they do shrink a little in the oven. They do. I do a lot of uh, roasted broccoli, yeah. and I never knew how easy it was, and you always think, oh, to roast her, you need to put it on a basket on your barbecue, which we can do in Southern California most of the year, mm -hmm. but... Pretty much all year round it. anymore. I mean, it can be 99 degrees in January. It's funny. So just, all right, rough chop there. And same thing with the cauliflower, just a nice little... Cauliflower is the vegetable, I think, that gets the worst wrap. It's so good for you, and people are like, cauliflower? That and Brussels sprouts. They're my new love. But you know what? I have converted so many people into cauliflower and Brussels sprouts lovers just <laughs> by simply roasting them. See? It's it easy. makes a huge difference. All right, so we just chop it. Look, I'm getting yep. rid of the... I eat zucchini raw. I love vegetables. Do you really? Though. I do. Do you ever do the zucchini ribbons? No. And, and do that as your, as your, as your pasta? No. <laughs> That's when I actually do do pasta. <laughs> the zucchini is always a vegetable. It is not a replacement. And we're just going to toss this with a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper. Oh, that's easy. And you can season this however you like if you want to add a little onion powder or a little garlic powder or even some herbs. I go through a lot of garlic powder in my kitchen. I do, too. It's garlic good. powder, granulated garlic, onion powder. Yep. I'm just going right. to clean hands again. And I have a prepared... I always and this is great because easy cleanup. Exactly. You whisk it away and it's clean. You know, when I work in a kitchen for 10 hours, the last thing I want to do when I get home is clean up a kitchen <laughs> after cooking dinner. So any shortcuts that we can do Look at that. is nice. So we just, I mean, it's pretty. You roast it for a few minutes. Um, I always turn my oven to 425 when I roast the vegetables. Okay. And then depending on the vegetables, some are going to quick, cook quicker yeah, than the others. Say. And you always want to get them about the same size. I don't mind if some are a little more underdone and some are a little more overdone. Yeah. Because you get that texture. So, all right, in the oven. And go in the oven for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And then start checking them when they're nice and browned. That's time to take them out. 
Okay. The zucchini boats, get your paddle, are cooking. They're yeah. baking. Veggies in the oven. Veggies are in the oven. Bell peppers ready to go. We're left with some lonely bell peppers. What should we do? Well, we can stuff them when the uh, <laughs> vegetables are done roasting. Okay, that's what's going in there. All mm -hmm. right, let me keep it all straight. So next up, we quinoa are... like 85 different ways. I love it. And we're going to do a little quinoa salad, and this is really quick. Oh, good. We already have our quinoa cooked. So I like to do the same amount of quinoa. If I'm going to do three cups of quinoa, I want to do three cups of broccoli or whatever vegetable. Again, this is... Oh, that's good. So you're not skimping out because sometimes it's too much of the quinoa or the... Or too much vegetable. Yeah. So I like a nice balance. So just do half and half. And then use, again, whatever kind of vegetable you like. I like this with broccoli because I like the crunch it gives it. Yep. If broccoli isn't in season, get whatever looks good at the farmer's market. Cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. Cauliflower, Brussels We're pushing sprouts. pushing those. Beets. I mean, really, anything can go oh, in here that would be yummy. Good. Yeah. So we're going to take some quinoa. Some I love how quinoa. you cook it. Just cook it like pasta and take that little extra step of draining it. Uh, yeah, and drain it and rinse it under cold water. Okay. Put it in a, in a mesh strainer and rinse it under cold water until the... Until the um, I was like, not... When you put your hand under there, it comes out cold. Not I was going to say, not a spaghetti strainer, because you'll lose half the quinoa. <laughs> you will. <laughs> a nice, fine mesh strainer is what you need there. Herb, I can do that. So this looks, I don't know, about like two cups, maybe three cups. Well, see, and the beauty of you and a lot of chefs who know their stuff is you're not out with a measuring cup. You just eyeball it. And it's okay to experiment and say a little more of this, a little tools, more of that. You know, a palm of this, a palm of yeah. that. Again, here, a palm of broccoli. We got about that much. We want to put about that much broccoli in And you it. chopped it. I like it. Bite-sized pieces. Yeah. And it also... I hate it when it's too big and you're trying to... And we didn't... This is raw because, you know, as it sits, it can sit in the dressing. And the dressing kind of marinates it and kind of softens it on its own. You could blanch it if you wanted to just to give it that softness and that bright green. Mm -hmm. But I kind of like it like this. I like that raw aspect to it. I do too. Oh, broccoli's so yummy. So we're going to put this in here. We're going to add some sunflower seeds. I like the, the texture that it does. And look, you don't have to s shell them. <laughs> no. And they're roasted and salted. If you don't like sunflower seeds, you could use cashews. You could use oh. peanuts. You could use... Pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin I'm big seeds. into pumpkin seeds. Oh, I haven't really gotten into those yet. Oh, darling, let me tell you. They're a good little <laughs> snack. We got some dry cranberries here. Which adds color and flavor. I mm -hmm. like the salty sweet. And then we're going to... The dressing will be tart. So we're going to have salty, sweet, and tart, all with quinoa and broccoli. Well, and dressings, there are certain times, I would say, when I have my Cobb salad, I like a little ranch. But at home, it's like I want a dressing with bold flavor that's easy to make and semi-healthy. Semi we're also going to add some, the, the dressing that we're going to make is a champagne vinaigrette. Oh, yum. And we're just going to add... I'm looking for the champagne. <laughs> <laughs> it's right there, unfortunately. Oh, it's just champagne okay. vinaigrette. There you go. Um, and we're going to impart a lot of flavor in it by adding some Dijon mustard, some salt and pepper, and a pinch of sugar. Just a pinch. I mean, we're having quinoa, no, so a pinch of yeah, sugar isn't going to It's okay. Hurt no, this is so healthy. And then we're also going to add some arugula to this. See, I love arugula. It is spicy. It's my favorite green. Mm. It, it really is my favorite green to use because it has its own flavor. It's not just lettuce. Yeah. It has that, that pepperiness to it. Yep. And that's that what it zing. Is that I just love and it pairs well with mm. any type of vinaigrette, any type of citrus dressing. And I'm not hungry at all. I'm eating everything. <laughs> so Before we just, the finished product. <laughs> so we're just going to toss all this together. Okay. Oh, I love it. This will. This may be my new staple. And this is great because it can sit in your salad for, uh, it can sit, it sit in your, your salad, salad? Sure. for three days. It can sit in your fridge for two or three days and the longer it sits, the kind of better it gets. Okay. And also what I like about the arugula for this is that it's hard enough to stand up to sitting. Oh, yeah, it is. That, You're that, right. It won't get, no, it won't get mushy. It, it stands like up to st sitting. <laughs> it stands up. It stands up to sitting. Oh, look, you spilled some. Uh, I think you should try right. that. Let's get on with the dressing because then I want to prep everything and plate it. Our veggies should be done roasting in just a minute here. So, so, and I love this to make dressing easiest thing ever. I love mason jars. I use them for yes. everything. So we're going to do, um, I always do two to one. Okay. Whatever your, whatever your dressing Champagne is. Champagne vinaigrette. Yes. So we're going to add some champagne vinegar. All right. And then fill the rest up with some olive oil. Now champagne vinegar it smells like vinegar, but a little lighter. It, I, I love it. It's got a great, just mild, mellow flavor yeah. to it. Different than a white vinegar, different than a white wine vinegar, because it has that sweetness. And the key ingredient. Dijon mustard. Some Dijon mustard. <laughs> 
And um, if you were doing this not in a mason jar, what you would do is you would do your vinegar and your salt and pepper and your Dijon mustard and whisk, whisk that, that together, together. Okay. and then slowly stream in your olive oil, Okay. just so it gets nice and emulsified. So emulsified, that's emulsified. a big word. It that's is. a kitchen word, that's it a chef is. word. <laughs> Here, look, we have rogue arugula in the pepper. <laughs> I'll get it out. Add some pepper. Right. We're gonna add some sugar just to give it that sweetness. If you don't want to use, you know, the white sugar, you can use sugar in the raw. You can, you could use stevia, but it's going to give you that kind of aftertaste. Yeah, a little bit of sugar is okay. Yeah, I mean, again, we're having quinoa. You know, it does help the medicine go down, as they say. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I'm taking you back. That would be Mary Poppins, wouldn't I it? I would be Mary Poppins. <laughs> so okay. we're just going to give it a shake. Shake, shake, shake. Your dressing. And we just oh, see I like how the it color of it. It's yeah. nice and... Who needs the shake weight? Just no, you make think, dressing. Exactly. <laughs> you know, they have those garlic shakers now where you can put that in there and shake it and it takes shake the skin it. off. Work out while you make healthy food. I, I can't stand it. You can give that a little taste if you want. My hands are clean. Oh, see that? Flavor. A little bit of a zing. Oh, I like that. You can add garlic to it. You can add herbs to it, whatever that you want. That one's going in my kitchen. Now, I like... This exact one, actually. I'm taking <laughs> it with me. I'll add all of this to this. Because okay. the quinoa will soak it up. Because that's what I was going to say. I'm a light light dressing girl, but I am trusting you on this. I am a light dressing. <laughs> uh, I was going to say light dressing okay. girl, but I'm a light dressing guy. We will trust Jeff on using all of that. And we're just going to toss this together. Well, and the broccoli together. really takes a lot of it in, too. Exactly. And after the sit, you might find in a couple days that you need to add more. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Just because the quinoa really So you come is over to my house and make more dressing. <laughs> to be happy to. I love it. See, look at this. Our salad's done. Okay. I'm going to go get the veggies. That would be fantastic. Let's stuff those. Oh, they smell so good. Look at that. Oh, that's perfect. I'll hold hot, one. Hot, you. Hot. Well, again, I have no fingers. So. I know. He, has a, he can do all this. Do not try this at home. So, again, we're going to do just equal parts mm. vegetables okay. to quinoa. Once we don't again. want to overpower anything. Mm. So good. Thank you. Roasting vegetables is the way to go. go. And then we are going to add, we have some fresh mozzarella that's hiding in here. Oh, that's what, I love fresh mozzarella. It yeah. is, it hides in its own little juice. Have you ever made fresh mozzarella? No. Neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other show. It is. <laughs> we can make ricotta and mozzarella. Look, we get it like this, it's beautiful. Why would we make it? Okay, we're just going to put some of this in here and then some is going to go on top of the bell pepper itself. Okay. Just because it kind of... You could also add some tomato in here just to kind of give it a little oh, extra. That would be, okay. Um, but you'll be surprised how much flavor the roasted vegetables impart into the quinoa. They go on this plate? Because mm -hmm. I have well, to. We're going to bake them really quick. Oh, never mind. It bakes you up. have another, yeah, we won't put that plate in the oven. Here we go. We yeah, see, I, and I have to tell you, when we used to stuff them, we always cut them the other way. I like this way better. You get. I like the little boats. Yeah. And I like the little, you know, I'm liking Again, the boats. you eat with your eyes first, so why not make it look pretty? I'd like, yeah, that's why I need you in my kitchen every <laughs> every day. And this can sit in your fridge, and you can have a nice little quinoa roasted veggie salad. I was gonna say that would be great for anything. And you could toss that with a little Meyer mm. lemon vinaigrette, and you're good to go. All right, so yummy. So this goes on top like so, and would go in the oven. All right. I will take those to the oven, and then I'm going to come back with everything, and we can taste it. That sounds fantastic. We I'll like tasting things, don't you know? Well, it's the whole point of cooking, right? Yeah. All you right, so we have make. our zucchini boat. Oh, my word. Look at those. Oh, yeah. Yum. All right. I do have a plate for this and a fork standing by. And I got some tongs here. The only thing with quinoa, make sure you have toothpicks handy. Yeah, right? <laughs> It's yeah. good, but if you're on a hot date, make sure you have toothpicks ready. Let's try fork that. There. Yeah. All right. And then the peppers. We snuck some in the oven. Oh my word! Look at those. Just oh, I see. You take the, the sauce and take the sauce and just kind of spoon it right on top there. And then we can take our bell pepper here in my hands. I know. Again, Look I have it. no feeling. Do not do that at this at home. A little cheese is melted together. Here we oh. go. And then. And then. 
Here, I'll swap you this. I'll take this out of the way. Hot stuff. What do you think? Should we put the salad on here and do a yeah. nice roll? Because you could either eat them all together, separate. I mean. But look at that plate. Oh, that's gorgeous. It's too gorgeous to eat, but guess what? We have something for meat eaters and veggie eaters <laughs> and everybody combined. I brought you a fork. Oh, thank you so much. All right, so the salad. I have to go in for this first. <laughs> I always I mean, have to I'm eat a salad meat eater. first. <laughs> It's not too dressing. It's not too. It's there isn't it too much dressing. Mm -hmm. Use your big words, Maria. <laughs> it totally does. I was skeptical. It soaks it right up. And again, as this sits, it, it'll soak it up more, but the grains stay separate. And that's why I've started to like quinoa. Oh. You don't need lasagna. You just need that. R really? I mean. That is so much more healthy and yummy. And it's gluten free, and it's. All right, now I'm digging in. With I mean, I'm not gluten free. I love my gluten. Oh, so do I. Never but. Every once in a while. Every once in a while. Your All meatless right. Mondays, even though that has meat in it. All right, and one last one with the pepper. And the pepper gets nice and soft. It does. But I can't decide which one I like best. I must try them all again. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best thing you can say to a chef. Oh, my word. You know what? Who knew quinoa? I make it one way at home. Now I have three more ways. Thank you so much for coming in. I love having you here. It's always my pleasure. Thanks to Jeff LaVia from Mr. J's Kitchen. I love that. <laughs> not Dr. J. You're not a basketball player. No, Mr. J. Yeah, Mr. J's Kitchen. I'm Maria Prekogis for Community Cooking. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next time. Mm. Okay, this is really, seriously, that came out good. If you would like a copy of the recipe seen on this show, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to the Office of Cable and Community Relations, 3350 Civic Center Drive, Suite 200. That's in Torrance, California, 90503. Be sure to note the show number and the date you saw the show. And don't forget, you can find all the fresh ingredients used on today's show at the Farmer's Market. Visit the one here in Torrance at Wilson Park. They're located at 2200 Crenshaw Boulevard. They're open every Tuesday and Saturday from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m., rain or shine. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, give us a call at 310-618-5762 or email us at communitycooking at torrenceca.gov.